<laughs> Hello, I'm David Ushery. By now, many of you have heard that there's a big change coming to television in February 2009. But if you're still not sure what it is, or what, if anything, you as a viewer need to do, spend a few minutes with us as we get ready for digital TV. The first all-electronic television was introduced to the public at the 1940 World's Fair in New York. And that's when NBC, RCA, announced a regular schedule of programs that would be broadcast. And then in 1941, the first signal from a commercial television station flickered to life, originating at NBC and Rockefeller Center. The broadcast was seen by about 1,000 viewers within a 40-mile radius from the transmitter atop the Empire State Building. It was a time when news crews wore suits and top hats, and the station's control room engineers had far fewer dials and video monitors to work with than they do now. And now the latest technology will enable stations to broadcast a digital signal in February 2009. It's such a big change. We really need to look at every aspect of what we do because, uh, uh, you know, anywhere from how we how we gather material in the field for our newscast to what we shoot in the studio LA, to what our syndication, you know, the, the, the people that produce our shows like Ellen, uh, how they how they come and how they deliver product to us, plus our transmission system. How do we get it out over the air? How do we get it to cable systems? All of that needs to be looked at and changed so that we can provide basically more data and, and, and better uh, picture information to improve the quality of the signal. So the full digital conversion is coming, but are you ready for it? Here's what you need to know to make sure your television will work next year. Well, I don't know too much actually other than um, Regular TVs are supposed to become somewhat obsolete uh, without a converter box of uh, some some sort. Everything's going to be HD in February of 2009. I don't really know too much about it. Indeed, technology and the public interest have pushed the federal government and the broadcasting industry to make a change they say will ultimately benefit the consumer and society at large. That change is in how all television signals will be transmitted to TV sets. For more than 50 years, television images have been sent in a way similar to radio broadcasts, a so-called analog signal with a certain frequency. Picture quality varies, and it takes a lot of bandwidth on the frequency spectrum just to send one signal. But in recent years, most stations have also added a digital transmission, which enables broadcasters to transmit signals as bits of data, like music is written on a CD. The picture quality is much sharper, and it enables TV stations to broadcast even more programming while using a much smaller portion of the public's airway. Digital broadcasting allows television stations to actually transmit more than one program at a time over their signal. So on NBC right now, many of our stations are airing the NBC network on one channel, and in the same signal, are airing uh, Weather Plus, which is a 24-hour-a-day weather um, uh, forecast service. So most TV stations have already been transmitting digital signals in addition to analog. But starting February 17, 2009, the federal government says all stations must drop their analog signals and rely on digital technology only, thus a full digital conversion. This change is most significant for TV viewers who use rabbit ear antennas atop their TVs or rooftop antennas to pick up broadcast stations. For their older analog TVs to work after the conversion, they will need a converter box, and we will have more on those in a moment. Customers who subscribe for television services with cable, satellite, or phone companies will likely be already set for the change. Even without cable or satellite, you should see a dramatic improvement in the picture on your TV with just a converter box, but there is an exception. With an analog set, the quality will keep degrading, so you could get something that's not great but watchable. With digital, they call it the cliff. Basically, you get to a point where the signal is so weak it drops off completely. So you either will see it nicely or you won't see it at all. But there is a solution. You need a better antenna. With the digital converter box, um, you can pick up, uh, we're using a digital, we're using a, a more modern, more uh, sensitive antenna here to pick up uh, the digital signal, which in this particular room is kind of weak. And you don't have to wait until February to try this. Actually, stations are broadcasting in digital right now, uh, so you, you can try it out right now and see how it's working. It's estimated nearly 70 million television sets will lose their signal in February if no action is taken. Now, you may be wondering why is the federal government requiring this major changeover? It has to do in part with public safety. Analog signals take up a lot of frequency bandwidth. While well, the federal government now wants some of that bandwidth back, primarily to make it available for emergency services, especially in a post-9-11 world. 
the big beneficiary of this uh, change from analog to digital will be the public safety uh, agencies, the police and fire departments across the country who right now are in great need of, of additional um, radio channels uh, to communicate with each other. It's very possible that uh, the NYPD or FDNY could in fact be using NBC frequencies in the future to talk to each other. And the television stations benefit as well. More programming, transmitted more efficiently, and with a better quality picture. WNBC has actually been working on digital conversion for about 10 years, essentially rebuilding parts of 30 Rock and putting a new transmitter and new antenna atop the Empire State Building. It's a lot of, you know, re-engineering the plant and new cameras, new core infrastructure. We're only as strong as the, as the people that watch us. We spent a long time, 60, 65 plus years, uh, really recruiting people to watch us and, and providing what we think is the best TV programming out there. And we'd like that to continue uh, after, uh, you know, after February 17th. So anything we can do to make this easier for the people that rely on us for their news information, entertainment, sports, you know, we're, we'd like to do everything possible. So if you purchased a television recently, you may already be prepared for the conversion. But keep in mind that stores have been allowed to keep selling their existing inventory of analog TVs, most likely at a less expensive price. Beginning in March of last year, the commission required that all um, television sets that were imported into the United States or uh, shipped uh, in interstate commerce contain uh, digital tuners, so they be, that they be digital. How do you know if your television has a digital tuner? If your TV has these labels, it should have a digital tuner inside. Integrated digital tuner, digital tuner built in, digital receiver, digital tuner, DTV, ATSC, HDTV, and you should be okay come February. If you have any of these markings on your television, it means you are not okay and will need a converter box or cable or satellite service. If your TV says digital monitor, HDTV monitor, digital ready or HDTV ready, this does not mean it contains a digital tuner. You will most likely need to get the converter box to receive digital TV next February, or you'll have no picture at all. Those of you with digital sets, uh, you know, have a better picture now. Those of you with analog sets, provided you get a converter box and have a properly uh, directed antenna or are on a cable system or a satellite system, will actually get a better picture uh, as a result of this digital transition. With the digital signal being more efficient, the way it's engineered is we can actually offer more than one program service on the same space that we used to use for analog. So basically it could be a, a local news channel, it could be sports, it could be another entertainment channel, but it really a weather channel. Uh, it gives really the local station a lot of opportunity to offer more free over the air local service to people uh, in their areas, which we're excited about and I really think the viewing public will be also. So now that you know whether you need a converter box, coming up, we'll tell you exactly what it does, how to get it, how to install it, and how to get help paying for it. Please stay with us. people. Don't be your own worst enemy. Don't smoke. I'm Adam Tropp. Every year thousands of car accidents occur on our roads. The victims not only are the people hurt in the accident, but their families as well. Injuries can cause lost income, permanent disability, even death. The emotional and financial strain can be overwhelming. If you or someone you love has been injured in a car accident, call us today. Paige Tropp and Amin, protecting you. miles per gallon in a brand new Kia Rio from just $11,999. Or get a new Kia Spectre from just $14,999. Only at Bill Settles Kia, Northwest 36th Street, 32nd Avenue, just 10 blocks east of the airport. I can't get enough, I wanna eat ya up. Wanna have you for dinner, left over for lunch, don't go. Foster Grant. No, don't go. Who could you be? I love every little thing. Foster Grant sunglasses. 
Subterranean termites cause billions of dollars in damage every year. Many companies only treat here, leaving the majority of your property unprotected. Truly Nolan's Three Zone Protection Plan provides the most technically advanced termite treatment. Zone 1 treats breaches in the interior. Zone 2 protects the entire foundation. Zone 3 covers additional areas conducive to termites. And this mouse backs it up with a million reasons. Only with Truly Nolan's Three Zone Protection Plan. Welcome back, everyone. As we get ready for digital TV, I'm David Ushery. Starting in February, many TV sets are going to need a converter box in order to receive the digital signal that will be broadcast by all the TV networks. The federal government is going to help pay for those boxes. If you receive over-the-air TV programming using rabbit ears or rooftop antennas to tune your signal, listen up. In order to be ready for the digital change in February of 2009, you need to purchase a converter box. If you are getting free uh, television, free over-the-air television, and you have an analog set, you would then need to secure a converter box, which, um, uh, which will then handle the translation for, uh, so that the um, digital signals can be viewable on your analog set. You can purchase these converter boxes at more than 250 retailers. These converter boxes are going to be in retail outlets um, as large as Walmart, Sears, Target, Circuit City, Best Buy, as well as online and mom and pop stores across the nation. These converter boxes cost between $50 and $70. The government is helping defray costs by issuing coupons. Up to two um, coupons per household worth $40 uh, a piece that will help consumers with, with the purchase of the converter box. So if the converter box costs between $50 and $70 and the coupon is worth $40, that means an outlay to the consumer of about $10 to $30 um, dollars, uh, per converter box. You can apply for the coupons by mail, by telephone at 188-388-2009, that's DTV2009, or on the web at www.dtv2009.gov. If you've already received your coupons, pull them out and take a good look at the expiration date on them, which is 90 days from the date it was issued. That means if you're waiting until February to buy the converter boxes, you'll be paying full price since your coupon will no longer be valid. One manufacturer, EchoStar, is going to be rolling out a converter box this fall that'll be exactly $40, so your government coupon will cover the whole cost. But check your expiration date before you wait for the cheaper box to become available. So now you know how to get your coupon to help pay for the converter box. Here are some tips to help you install it. Several manufacturers are putting out digital to analog converter boxes, which you need if you currently use rabbit ear antennas to sharpen your TV's picture right now. The ones we've seen are very simple to hook up. So on your converter box, you'll have RCA connections, your red, white, and yellow. You'll have your coax connection that's going out to your television, and you'll have your uh, antenna in. So uh, this is where you put your analog antenna. Connect that up and match everything on the same uh, spectrum on the back of your set, and you're ready to go. Once you uh, connect your cables up, you actually put an analog antenna onto your set, and then, then you can just guide yourself right through. You tell it uh, if you have a widescreen or if you have a 4.3, this screen happens to be a 4.3 ratio. And now it's going to uh, start searching for the channels. We've tried to make it as easy as possible for consumers to simply take the box out of the cardboard box that it comes in, plug it into the wall, plug it into the TV, pick up the remote, and you're good to go. And that's it. The converter box comes with a universal remote control. So it works out of the box with 30 million televisions, uh, or you can program it for any television uh, brand that you have. Another great feature is the closed captioning button. You can hit that and automatically turn on the closed captions if you have English as a second language or you're hard of hearing. And the next thing you'll notice will be more channels. With digital TV, you should get more than double the number of channels you had before. In most areas, you'll see three NBC stations, including one Weather Plus with your local weather forecast showing 24 hours a day. For some stations, the channel you see them on now may not be their permanent home. So when February 17th comes along, you may have to just go through and, and have your, your converter box just search for channels again, because they, they may have actually moved on the dial. And researching for channels periodically is a good idea as more broadcasters may add other channels, and your TV will only pick them up when the converter box scans for them. Some of you may simply decide it's time to buy a new TV set with a digital tuner before next year's conversion. Coming up, we'll show you some of the options on the market. We'll also explain why digital does not necessarily mean high definition.
you know that driving without a seatbelt could cost you more than just your life? Did you know you pay for every person in a car not belted in? Do you know what kind of damage that ticket will do to your wallet? Know this. Buckle up. Saves lives. Saves money. All right. Hey, good to see you again. Good to see you. Making cookies? For my nieces. That is so sweet. Yeah. How hard could it be? Uh-oh. Uh-oh, what? You're going to need baking soda, not baking powder. I'll get that. Hey, could you... I thought I had the right thing. If <laughs> baking powder, it could be you. Are you? What? Just in case. You're going to be fine. Trust me. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> They're going to love them. Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. I need money, honey. Want to sell your merchandise? Forget the classifieds or the web. We're South Florida's premier state licensed pawn shops here to serve you. For 20 years, our family owned business has been paying customers top dollar for their merchandise jewelry, diamonds, gold, tools, electronics, and more. We provide quick, convenient cash loans and we treat all of our customers with respect. Want the most money on your valuables? Call us today or visit INeedMoneyHoney.com for the location nearest you. Ode to the Subway $5 foot loan. Want to send your hunger on a permanent vacation? Pack its bags with a foot long of fantastic flavor. Only five bucks each. That ain't a bargain, friend. It's Grand Theft Sandwich. Freshly baked bread, piled high with deliciousness, on top of more deliciousness. Any regular foot long yum rocket. Only five bucks each. Only at Subway restaurants. Subway, eat fresh. Welcome back. Perhaps some of you are thinking, rather than get a converter box to bring digital into your home, it's time to get a brand new television set. Well, right now, there are more options than ever. If you decide to buy yourself a new television, there are many options to choose from. Take a walk down the aisle of your neighborhood electronic store. Plasma TVs, LCDs, front projection, rear projection, DLPs, tubes, choices, choices, choices. What we're looking at here, we have two options. Uh, one is LCD, the other is plasma. Uh, both remarkable technologies, uh, both flat panel, so you can mount them both on the wall. Uh, the difference between the two is one uses a, a gas technology, which is the plasma. That is very, very good across the board, movies, sports, things of that nature. LCD, however, is another option. It's great if you're using it uh, for multimedia. So if you're wanting to use it to somehow watch TV, watch some sports, uh, but you also want to use it for gaming, you want to use it for a uh, computer monitor, so you would want to use an LCD as opposed to uh, a plasma. Another option looks very similar to what was rear projection televisions but they've been reincarnated. It is uh, called DLP, Digital Light Processing. It's not a flat panel, it's a large screen. It's a great option if you have the space. It's a great option for individuals not looking to uh, spend, uh, looking to save a little bit more money and uh, getting a large uh, screen for their purchase. And then you'll see signs like 1080i and 1080 Progressive. Uh, we have two televisions here. One television is a 1080p, the other television is a 1080i or 720p. Uh, the difference between the two, both are high definition. The major difference is that 1080p is giving you high definition on steroids. So it's very, very good, very exciting. If you want the best of the best, then yes, 1080p is definitely where you want to be. If you're looking to just get in the ball game of high definition, then you would go with a 1080i or 720p, both meaning basically the same thing. Regardless of which television you choose, remember, not all digital TVs are high definition TVs. All flat panel TVs today are digital, so you will get a digital broadcast, but they're not necessarily HD TV. HD TV is the highest form of video broadcast, and those sets are going to cost more. If you plan to purchase a new TV that relies on a rooftop or indoor antenna, consider models with a built-in HDTV or DTV tuner, also known as an ATSC tuner. All new TVs are required to incorporate an ATSC tuner, but retailers can still sell a limited number of non-ATSC tuner equipped TVs. Those must come with a consumer alert label so you know you need to buy a converter box by February of 2009.
If you buy a high-definition television with a built-in HD tuner, you will see true high def through your antenna in February of 2009. And on many channels right now. If you're using a cable system or a satellite system, your set-top box must be an HD box. And then you must also subscribe to the HD channels. Now, many times customers are going to their original channel and not realizing that if it's a channel 4 or a channel 7 or channel 9, that they must tune to a different channel number in order to receive the HD. With growing concern about the environmental future of the planet, many may wonder what they should do with their old television sets once they purchase new ones. You can turn to your local government for options. Each year, the amount of garbage that's collected, sorted, and recycled is growing. And nowadays, that garbage includes electronic waste. Phil Nolan's town has received accolades for its recycling efforts. Electronic waste is the fastest growing component of solid waste. It also houses a lot of heavy metals. So it's really important to pull it out of the waste stream and recycle it. So what do you do? Where do you start if you decide you want to get rid of your analog TV? Well, you can't just throw it out with the garbage. First, check with your local town officials to see if they have an e-waste recycling program. They can go to their government officials and say, look, we think this is a problem that's going to uh, grow as time goes on, and we want to be part of the solution rather than part of the problem. Part of the problem, though, is that the process is expensive, even though some electronic parts are now being sold off. Any recycling component in, in the uh, in the e-waste that they can get a mark that they can get a dollar for that they will. So I mean they're kind of picking on it like a pigeon on a chicken bone. There's metal tips on the circuit boards. There's scrap metal within there. There's certain type of plastics that have some value to them. But with potentially harmful components, officials believe the safest way to discard electronic items is to recycle them if you can. Citizen activists should just take a look at what the municipality is doing currently with the e-waste. If they don't have a program, they ought to step up and uh, make a difference. You know there's a expression, uh, think globally, act locally. Now that we as broadcasters and you as viewers are stepping fully into the digital age, what's next? 3D televisions? Portable TVs? Behold the future, coming up. Displays, closeouts, one of a kind, and more. Must go now during the Scratch and Dent sale at Rec Warehouse. Up to 50% off all remaining pools. Spas and hot tubs from $700. Up to 60% off all patio furniture. Store-wide Scratch and Dent sale now at Rec Warehouse. Hi, I'm Eddie D'Amelio, owner of Eddie D'Amelio's Collision Experts. We're family-owned and operated business, and I've been serving South Florida for over 20 years. I want to welcome you to my state-of-the-art collision center with over 20 certified technicians offering quality service and fine attention to detail. Remember, if you want rollout red carpet service, choose Eddie D'Amelio's Collision Experts. Remember, if you've been in a car accident, it's your car, it's your choice. Choose Eddie D'Amelio's Collision Experts. Hello, may I help you? Uh, yes, Clyde and Keith to see Emmett Smith. Emmett, your gray facial hair has put you in a rocking chair. Your beard is weird. Your stash is trash. Oh, it's bad. Just for Men gel penetrates tough gray and puts it away in five easy minutes. His edge is back. He's right on track. Backfield in motion. He moves and grooves. He scores! Just, Just for Men gel Keep your edge. Call 33 miles per gallon in a brand new Hyundai Accent from just $11,999. Get a new Hyundai Elantra from only $14,999. Only at Bill Settles Hyundai, Northwest 36th Street, 32nd Avenue, just 10 blocks east of the airport. I can't get enough, I want to eat you up. want to have you for dinner, left over for lunch, don't go. Foster Grant. No, don't go. Who could you be? I love every little thing about Foster you. Grant sunglasses. Displays, closeouts, one of a kind, and more. Must go now during the Scratch and Dent sale at Rec Warehouse. Up to 50% off all remaining pools. Spas and hot tubs from $700. Up to 60% off all patio furniture. Store-wide Scratch and Dent sale now at Rec Warehouse. The digital conversion next year is not an end game, but really the beginning of a technology makeover that will be coming soon to a television near you. Technology that enables you, the viewer, to have more control in deciding what you see and when you see it. 
So now that we've gone digital and you've gone digital, what's next? What is the future of TV? Right now is the absolute best moment in history to be a television viewer. What we're seeing right now is, is a real change in evolution in what it means for NBC to be an entertainment company. We're actively engaged with our audiences. We're trying to provide you as much great content as possible, whether it's news or sports or weather or entertainment. And we're trying to provide it to you on all these different devices, um, on demand at any time you seek to choose to find that content. We're finally there. The technology is finally coming of age, and we're finally able to provide you that great content at any time on any device, and it's really exciting. So no longer will you, our viewers, be passive watchers. With this new IPTV, the internet, and your home computer, you will be able to access video and audio on demand. More and more people are wanting what they want when they want. So the idea of watching Friends at 8 o'clock doesn't play anymore. They, can, they want to watch it when they want. And so the NBC library, or any network that has a library, people are going to want to see the shows they want. The trick is, how easy is it for them to get them, find them, and use them? And networks are actively preparing to make those libraries available to viewers. NBC Universal, along with Fox, has Hulu.com. It's expected to be fully ready by year's end and will allow people to go to that website, choose any program, and watch. Hulu is really interesting because it's really about taking that content that we would traditionally uh, assume would be available only on a, on a television screen and making sure it's available over the internet, on your computer, on your iPod, on a mobile device, etc. So we're taking all the best programs from NBC, things that are there from the library and from our history, like great John Belushi skits from Saturday Night Live, or old episodes of uh, old shows like Different Strokes or Silver Spoons. The interesting feature here is right now your television isn't capable of thinking this way, but your computer can. What a computer really is, is a, is a, um, a brain or some type of central um, uh, mechanism through which we can actually program or um, access content. Content could be programming and entertainment that we watch traditionally on a television screen, or it could be information that we garner from a Google or an NBC.com or a Yahoo or a Wikipedia, whatever it might be. So in the near future, your computer can be hooked up to your television monitor. You go online, select the show or movie you want to watch, and instantly it appears, like a personal on-demand service. A consumer benefit because they'll get more choice. And when it comes to technology, the choices for viewing increase even more. How about a 3D television? Philips is making one. Or a roll-up TV like this one from Polymer Vision. It's like a plastic-like material that rolls up, and you unroll it, and it's a screen. It's an LC, it's a LCD type screen. You can download stuff. It's more geared towards the newspaper, but once they have the technology, if you can get that kind of content on, well, you know, how much harder is it to get the rest of the content on? Or OLED technology. That's organic light emitting diode TVs. Sony's version is only 10 millimeters thick. How about a mobile pedestrian handheld? LG's making this device that enables you to watch TV wherever you are. All proof that television in some form is here to stay. There's a lot to look forward to, a lot to see, and the television picture should be a lot clearer for all viewers. We certainly hope we've helped you get ready for digital TV. I'm David Ushery. Thanks for watching.